For the past two years, Beijing has been snapping up grain in the international market. China's grain imports from January to August this year have already gone up 35 percent compared to the same period last year. In 2020, its imported grain was 28 percent more than the year before in 2019. This surge not only pushes up food prices around the world, but also adds to the uncertainties and potential pitfalls of the global food supply chain. But the driving forces behind China's food crisis are more complex than rising energy costs, natural disasters, and growing demand. Understanding these issues, which are unique to China, is critical as they directly impact the price of the food on our tables. Hi, welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lei. When it comes to food, Beijing is caught in a catch-22 situation. On the one hand, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want to rely on foreign food imports for its lifeblood out of national security concerns. I talk about this in my last video, you can check it out. On the other hand, it wishes to buy more food from the international market because it's cheaper than domestically produced food. Part of the reason that drives China's food buying spree is that its domestic grain prices are higher than the international grain prices. Waste, pollution, and corruption are plaguing China's domestic agriculture industry and driving up the costs. China once considered itself an agricultural giant. The most populous country now has 7% of the world's arable land, but needs to feed 20% of the world's population. China's total arable land has been declining since 2010 as a result of new construction natural disasters, and environmental challenges. The country consumes more than 30% of the total fertilizer and pesticide in the world, for only 9% of the world's farmland. Official news agency Xinhua said in 2014 that more than 40% of China's arable land is suffering from degradation. The rich black soil in northern Heilongjiang province is thinning, while farmland in the south is suffering from acidification. A 2014 news report by state media showed that China's arable land contaminated by heavy metals has reached 20 million hectares. That's one-sixth of the country's total arable land. Water is an important agricultural resource, but more than half of China's rivers have disappeared since the year 2000. The country's per capita water availability is one quarter of the global average. In 2005, then Premier Wen Jiabao said that water scarcity threatened the survival of the Chinese nation. Inefficient water management and widespread water pollution are making the problem even worse. In addition, massive droughts and floods frequently ravage the country. In 2013, shortly after he became China's leader, Xi Jinping initiated Operation Empty Plate, an initiative to stop food wasting. This past August, the Empty Plate campaign was relaunched. As international food prices rise, the amount of food wasted in the country comes with a hefty price tag. On September 7th last year, Chen Shaofeng, deputy director of the Institute of Sustainable Development Strategies at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, pointed out that China wastes 135 million tons of food, ranking first in the world, close to one-third of the world's total food waste. China's food waste average is 276 grams or 10 ounces per person per day. That's 55 percent more than the world's per capita average at 178 grams. The wasted food can feed 103 million people a year. That's about 7.5% of the Chinese population, or a third of the U.S. population. Of the 135 million tons of wasted food, Chen estimated that 17 to 18 million tons are food wasted through food services, like restaurants or events. But that's only about 12% of the waste. What's the other 88%? This past July, Nature magazine reported that China wastes a third of its food and the bulk of it is lost during food storage and processing. 
How is it possible to lose 100 million tons of food during storage and processing? Last July, a video circulated on the internet exposed moldy, blistered corn stored at a state grain warehouse in Heilongjiang province. In the video, a woman claims to have purchased a large amount of reserve corn, but she was shocked to find out that the corn in the warehouse was moldy, emitted a pungent odor, and was mixed with chaff. She was given a hard time by the warehouse staff who demanded a kickback, and was told this is the type of grain the state grain warehouse has. What are you going to do about it? What this woman uncovered is the most common type of corruption in China's state grain reserve system. The CCP has a policy of storing up to six months of grain for national security purposes, such as in the case of disasters or wars. It has built a large number of national grain reserve warehouses, and this is one of the most corrupt areas in the CCP. The problem the woman saw was the most common method of embezzlement called circling of grains. The corrupt person, usually the person managing the warehouse, sells old or stale grain at discounted prices and buys it back at new crop prices, pocketing the difference. For example, the former general manager at Qingshan County State Food Management Company sold 1,200 tons of old grain at a lower price and bought 900 tons of it back into the warehouse as a new crop, pocketing over 200,000 yuan or $30,000. That's why the grain in these warehouses is often of bad quality and can only be used to feed animals. In his book, The Record of Speeches, former Chinese Premier Zhu Rongji recorded how he was deceived by local officials. In late May 1998, Zhu, who had just assumed the premiership of the state council, visited a county in Anhui province to see how it was implementing the national grain purchase policy. In order to cover up their corruption, the county's deputy governor personally supervised the shipment of fresh grain from other regions the day before Zhu arrived. In another example, Su Hu Finance reported the suspicious fire at the China National Grain Storage Lingdian Warehouse in 2013. Four days after the central government's inspection team arrived, 78 grain storage bins went up in flames and burnt 47,000 tons of grains. Subsequently, state grain warehouse in Heilongjiang, Jilin, Jiangxi, Henan went up in flames. This year, on July 1st, Grain warehouse in Guizhou province located in Duyun city had fire too. Unexplained fires are very common in the state grain warehouses and are widely believed to be used as a tactic to cover up for the lost grain supplies. And early this month, the Commission for Discipline Inspection and Supervision punished a few corrupt officials in charge of grain reserve warehouses in Qinghai, Jilin, and Jiangsu provinces. The state-controlled media calls the punishment the elimination of grain rats. In decades of Great Leap Forward-style industrialization, environmental damage, pollution, and above all, widespread corruption are threatening China's agriculture and food production, making locally produced food more expensive. This has caused Beijing to rely more and more on foreign imports, which in turn has raised the food prices in the global market. Therefore, pollution and corruption in China are no longer just China's problem. They are everyone's problem now. You can watch my last video on the CCP's perceived war with the West over seeds and animal husbandry. There's one more issue I didn't touch on in this video. That's China's loss of agriculture labor force. That's a big topic and I'll address it some other time. Thank you for watching. That's all for today and I'll see you soon.